I bought a super old windsurf board for just one single euro. <laughs> we do the deal. <laughs> took it to the water and compared it to one of the fastest boards on the planet. One euro board, let's go! And at the end of this video, you'll get the chance to win these two boards by simply writing a comment below this video and subscribing to the channel. Amigos, I'm a little bit nervous because in 10 minutes I have an appointment to collect my new board. And of course, I'm gonna bring exactly one euro to buy it. But I think it's very hard to believe that I will get a board that is anywhere near being useful. The weather is actually not so bad. We agreed to meet at our local lake. And I know that the board is very old, of course. So I'm a little bit scared that it's too long to fit in my van. So if that board is above three meters, it's gonna be a problem. Lake looks actually like it's windy. Not for me today, but of course the next days I will get out there and test the new board. But first I need to find the board. Oh, ha. oh is it nice? Awesome. Wow. Wow. So I'm here together with Lemi. Yeah, you're selling me your board yep. for one euro, <laughs> <laughs> which I think is a very good price because I'm, I'm super surprised of how light the board is. I, don't, I never have used, used them. Okay. Um, I have buy them with uh, in a package with other, other things uh, okay. of winter uh, materials. Maybe 15 years uh, with board is uh, in my storage. Okay. <laughs> but uh, I never was driven them. Uh, it's a slalom board, ultra light. I really thought I would get a super heavy board that is barely able to sail. Maybe it can be faster or of the same uh, speed with your slalom board. And we will see, but if that's the case, then I have a problem. Thanks a lot for the board. No problem. I need to pay you now. <laughs> <laughs> for one euro. <laughs> I brought you exactly one euro. Thank you so much. It's so if good. you're in it, <laughs> we do the deal. <laughs> I'm, I'm back at the car. And I bought the board for one euro and I can't believe it. The weight of the board is insane. The board has yeah, not a lot of grip, of course. It has a power box already. It says Pro Bio Carbon Sandwich Technology. And it's incredible. And if you think about how many thousands, ten thousands of these boards are laying around in garages and so on, people are not using the equipment anymore. I don't know what this is. I, I just hope the thing will not rip. Then if we look at the nose of the board, you know, we can see all the carbon. But yeah, windsurfing Hawaii. Never saw that brand in my life before. The board actually fits in my car. 15 centimeters uh, of space left there. And this is the long version. It's the next day. Today we are supposed to get some wind and I'm here at our wind lounge office. And now, first thing that we will be doing is measuring the weight. This is gonna be complicated. Oof. Handling the board is definitely harder than handling a modern board. It's almost the height of our office. This is my high tech carbon slalom board, which actually has a retail price of 3,000 euro. Oh, wow. If I'm looking at the boards right now, I'm actually wondering how many liters this board has because it's, it's not written on the board. Let's start with measuring the dark horse. Hello? 7.3. Okay, so this board is 7.3 kilograms, which is like you almost have nothing in your hands and when you're riding it on the water, it's pretty much the same. It could be the same weight. It's incredible. It's 8.2 kilograms, roughly. That's lighter than a lot of the modern free ride, free race boards, for sure. We are almost at Lenk Zwenkau. This is the spot where we are driving to. Niels is also gonna join. Could be completely overpowered could be completely underpowered. And um, I'm also a little bit scared because now that the boards are almost the same weight, what if the performance is also almost the same and you can get pretty much a board for one euro that does the same thing, but uh, that, that can't be the case. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's looking very windy down at the lake. So uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be overpowered, not underpowered. But I want to show you uh, my newest acquisition now. This was one euro. 
This is actually not so bad for one euro. The guy said he had it in his garden for more than 10 years. I just did the measurements, but you can guess. Oh, it's not so heavy. <laughs> yeah, it's eight kilos. It's like a modern board. It's like a modern board. It's completely insane. Would you want no, to buy it? I don't want to buy it. <laughs> Would you want to buy this board for two euro? <laughs> I have, together with my dad, I think around 20 of these boards in the garage. Everyone who used to windsurf 20 years ago has at least 10 of those in the garage. Or... Like it's, it's even hard for me now to compare it. I mean, of course, this one is much, much longer. About the volume, I, I simply don't know. The foot strap positioning, that's actually interesting and that's something that I'm worried about a little bit because the foot straps are a lot more to the front of the board. So I don't know how that is going to work with a modern free ride, free race sail. Yeah, the deck, the deck here is completely flat. If you look at this board on the other side, it's, it's thick at the back of the board. You have this concave here. It's a very detailed shape. Of course, you have foot pads here. You don't have foot pads on the old board. I don't understand why, why they didn't had the idea to put foot straps on the board. Very different position of the mast track. The nose is different. Actually so lucky that I got a race board that is carbon. So we actually get kind of a comparison of what happened in the race world. And now if we turn the boards around, then you have these super modern cutouts here in the back of the board. You have these rail cutouts. I don't know how they are called. You can let me know in the comments. This is supposed to be the, the original fin for the, for the old board. And this is the fin that I'm gonna use for the, for the dark horse. Damn guys, we have a problem. Like this is the longest screw that I have and it's really, really long. There's no modern board where you would need a screw like this and it's not long enough. You're saving my video for the third time in a row today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is what I needed. Boxes. As the sale, I'm gonna take uh, my 0.7 ACX, seven square meters. The wind just picked up and it's like 30, not maybe even a little bit more in the gusts. I'm gonna start with this board now. Oh no, what is this? <laughs> this sail to the board. I have my, my GPS watch ready. The goal is to hit the 30 knots as always. I can barely talk because of the cold air. My throat hurts so much, but I'm absolutely surprised by the board. So guys, a little ad break. Because you might've seen it, we got <laughs> <laughs> new Jibewear beanies. They are out right now online in the shop. The link is down below in the video description. Yeah, you like them? Yes, I really like them, especially this one. And the snowman also likes the beanies, of course. And aside from the salmon color, we also got a gray color. And then we also have the beautiful color green. 
So check out the link in the video description and now have fun with the rest of the video. Bye bye. <laughs> It's quite the opposite actually of not being able to sail. You can actually simply go windsurf with it. I mean, obviously that's what they windsurfed on decades ago. There are some, some differences to the modern boards that are, oh, you really have to get used to it. As soon as it gets really choppy, you really have to try and keep the nose high, high enough to not, you know, fall over. Then when you jibe, it's the same problem. When you're jibing from behind into a chop, you're, you're so low on the water that you really have to lean all the way to the back on the board uh, to make the jibe. And that makes it, of course, harder to plane through the jibe. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of differences. Yeah, but I will wait with the final conclusion, of course, until I now tried my uh, new board against that, because I think that is what matters. And that's when you actually feel the difference. You know, if I was a windsurfer and I was just starting out, I can already say yes. It's definitely a lot harder on a, than on a modern board, but it's also definitely possible. Let's take a look at the speed. Ah, 26 knots, okay. It's not fast, but I'm already having the, an idea for, the, for one of the next videos, which would be to tune this board with a different fin, different sail maybe even, and then try and beat the 30 knots on it. Let's change it up, take the dark horse. I have a little bit of a bias because Futurefly is my board sponsor, but this channel, and I'm doing YouTube since I think around seven years. And I, by the way, I just recently switched into English, but this channel was always about being honest um, about how things are. And this is also why I'm making this video to just make the point that windsurfing doesn't have to be expensive. I'm back from the water and I'm starting to really feel the temperatures also because I fell in a few times with the old board and um, but yeah I was so full of adrenaline even before I went on the water because I was so excited that I, yeah, I didn't really feel the cold when I w went on the water I was very very confused like this super long board really messed with my brain and I think I experienced a glimpse of what all the windsurfers are experiencing that sailed for years on this super old equipment and are buying a new board for the first time because it's so different. This board, because of its, its length, was, how do you say, smooth. It didn't, it didn't move much uh, over the water because it, you know, so much of the board was in the water, it didn't really rail like a train. I don't know how to explain it. Of course, it's the highest possible tech fully carbon slalom race board from the PWA and it's meant to ride as free as possible over the water and it did exactly that and when you have the contrast the direct contrast I uh, went for the first speed run <laughs> and this board is so much faster that I I couldn't see anything anymore because the cold wind was blowing into my eyes I was like Jesus what is going on now while well, this board you know it was kind of slow so yeah the, the the first few minutes were actually quite hardcore then of course I got back into my rhythm 
and um, yeah, it's faster. It, I would say it, it gets planing even a little bit easier than this one. Jibes is no comparison on this board, of course. Going in a straight line, it's faster and so on. But weirdly, I felt more control on this one. I think this is because this is so much slower and longer. And uh, yeah, and then also, guys, the foot straps. On this board, the foot straps were the right size, but in comparison, they felt so large. I felt like I was stepping in a big black hole or something like that. But I think I have to calm down now a little bit and then we see each other in my basement. Follow me, guys. <laughs> yeah, it looks uh, not so nice. It's full of spider webs. I hate spiders. But guys, regarding the two boards, that I'm giving away. This one right here is the first one. It's basically my first wave board. It looks beautiful, but it has been laying around in this basement for now two or three years. And then if I go a little bit deeper into the cave, then there is this beautiful board. And my long-term viewers, they know this board. It was basically my, my second wave board. It's a two-year-old board from Futurefly. It's in great condition, actually. It's owned by our surf shop, the Wind Lounge, but I talked to the guys. We are giving this board away as well. Okay, guys, so these are the two boards, probably some of the most beautiful wave boards out there. This is actually a freestyle wave board, and this is simply a Futurefly Yellowfish. But yeah, so to also conclude this video, that's the whole point. There is equipment laying around in garages, basements, also surf shops, you know, in so many places. And you know, you're always thinking, oh, maybe one day I'll need it again. Maybe one day I'll hang it on the wall. But will you actually do? I don't know. And the same goes for me with this board, for example. It looks beautiful. There are a lot of memories that I have with this board. I simply don't think that I would have used it in the next couple of years. I also would not have sold it because then I would have had the excuse that it's a personal thing for me. And like this, I hope somebody else gets to enjoy it. And regarding this board, it's exactly the same thing. Of course, this one can easily be sold. But of course, I also hope that it helps growing the channel. And so if you want to win these boards, um, simply subscribe to this YouTube channel and write a comment below and I will pick the winner randomly in the comments so you can come back to this video in one or two weeks. Be aware of scammers, always check that I am actually the real Mario uh, who answered to your comment. And before I forget, of course, we will cover the shipment for these two boards and we will ship them worldwide. So if you're in the US or in whatever other country, of course, you can participate in the giveaway. And aside from that, guys, I've got more content planned like exactly this. And yeah, I would say we see each other the next time. Stay tuned. Bye bye.